Okay, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? So we continue with the hybrid application development. Um, last Friday, I sent you an email about the credit exercise. So I don't know if you have read it, but let's uh, let's see it together. Let's uh, find it here from my drive. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> so like uh, discussed earlier already in the beginning of the web interfaces course. So the web interfaces and this hybrid application development <coughs> exercise are done, uh, done for the same uh, application. So <coughs> whereas for the web interfaces, you uh, develop the API part for the application, which could be used to, uh, to sell some items, uh, each user could create an account and then post post uh, their items for sale and then modify those items and other users could then uh, search for, for items in the service also without registering. So the application would be similar like in Finland we have this story.fi or, or globally there is ebay.com and many many other similar uh, services. Oops, okay, here is a copy-paste error application and mobile application. So, <clears throat> so the task is to uh, implement a mobile application for this. So here in this hybrid application development part, your task is to do, do the uh, application with, uh, with React Native or alternatively, if you are already having skills with Flutter, or, or some other technology which could be considered hybrid in some way, then uh, you could also use that one. So I have not enforced the technology to be React Native, but React Native is what we are studying during the course. So <clears throat> yeah, so as it says here, so the application backend should be the one which we develop for the web interfaces. And here we have the uh, link for that exercise and all the functional requirements are the same what we had for the web interfaces. So if you take a look here, so all these same functional requirements are valid uh, for the hybrid application development exercise as well. So there is the user registration and login, then create new items to sell with these properties, then be able to modify, delete these posts, and then search and view both from other users. So these are the functional requirements which are valid for this one as well. Uh, the schedule and return instructions are the same in this hybrid application as there well were for the web interfaces course. So the deadline is the same one. And you must return the workshop via this, uh, return it with, via this Moodle workshop. And then there is a peer review for two, two other works. Then here is uh, instruction for this API. So you would need to have API documentation and, and the address and then GitHub repository. So this GitHub repository is the same for this hybrid application. So your code must be in the GitHub. And then in addition, you must make a video recording of you demonstrating the application on the mobile device or an emulator or simulator on your computer. And then this video must be available somewhere. So here YouTube or something is suggested. And so that it can be viewed with a link. So the purpose of this one is so that uh, the people who are reviewing your mobile application uh, don't have to necessarily build and deploy the application their devices. They, they should be able to do it, but with the video, it should be easier to, to view uh, the mobile application, how it looks like, uh, and then look the code and then give the grading for it. So a video for the mobile application. Okay. Then about the grading. So 20 points, what you can get from this exercise maximum, same points. Uh, as the web interfaces, 
And then what the features, okay. So user login system with authenticates and authorizes users to access the system. So this is four points when the, this is done uh, in cooperation with the server. So previously, uh, some students who did not manage to complete the whole exercise, they had, for example, these features partially working. So for example, that there was no interaction with the server or some features were working with the server and some had, for example, uh, a user interface with some placeholders only or so. So in those situations, they can get uh, partial points of these. To get the maximum points on these sections, it, it always needs a requirement that uh, the application is working together with the server, reading and, and, and sending data to the server. Same thing for this uh, create new post. Again, information should be saved through the API. And then uh, search and view the posts, same here with the server interaction. And then modify and delete posts, same with server interaction. So all in all, four, six, five, and five are the points. And then here are some general negative uh, things. So messy code, which for example, is it's very difficult to read because of lacking or, or mixed up indentations, or you have not followed uh, good programming practices, which is always to uh, split the functionalities into individual pieces. And in case of React Native, those would be components. So while it is possible to create a fully working application, for example, having only a single React Native component, uh, that would be a negative factor because it's not a good practice. So that's why here this is listed. Okay, and that's it. So all in all, exercise is done together with the web interfaces exercise. So that uh, together your web interface exercise and this hybrid application development exercise together, they would form a fully working mobile application with the back end. Uh, and then uh, these are returned together via Moodle to the uh, workshop in the course page. And then there is a peer review of two persons. So uh, when you are reviewing the work of someone else, you must consider these uh, grading categories that are here and then think that, okay, how many points do you think that for example, this implementation would be worth based on what you see? See, and then uh, there is the mobile application and then the, uh, the interface part. So if you remember here, there are the, this is then the uh, grading criteria for the web interfaces part. So it's a little bit different here we are for example, the implementation in the web interfaces is only seven points, and that would entail all of these. Whereas here in the mobile application side, in the hybrid application development exercise, you have these uh, based on directly on the functional requirements. So so far we have not yet uh, we have not yet uh, in our lessons covered. How to, how to do this uh, with, with React Native or how to deal with server interaction, but that will be that, that will be a topic of uh, this week's second lesson. Okay, any questions about this? So if, if there are no questions, then uh, if you have not yet started doing this exercise, I really recommend that you start doing it. Uh, because here you would, would need to design the user interface for your application. I have not specified how it should look like, what kind of views you should have there, how should all the UI elements be laid out. That is your task. So that is a great starting point. And then, uh, already with the skills what we have learned uh, last week, you should be able to start implementing those views. Then today we are going to be uh, 
learning about how to do navigation, which means that how to switch the views in your application based on some event. Or when you click a button and then you need a new view, then how to do that. For example, if in the beginning the application would show some kind of login screen, and when you click on the login, then you would need to go you know, some view which displays these screens, then navigation is is the part which deals with that, switching the view. Okay, let's then start uh, on that. And but before starting that, we have again the new week uh, beginning. So you should go to the uh, learning progress tracking here in our mobile applications. Um, we are using the same progress tracking as with the web interfaces. So the progress tracking link is here. So please go on and mark mark uh, your uh, last week progress. How, what do you think about? What is your opinion of, of what we did last week? Did you were you able to understand <coughs> those things and then master them, or or not, or something in between? So please go and update your progress record. That sheet. Uh, meanwhile, I will start my mobile development environment and show you the navigation example and then walk you through the code. Uh, what is this? A new kind of error then. Okay. Screen is operating as usual. It's loading. Yeah, so the navigation, we are going to be using an external navigation um, library and now uh, the code example what I'm going to show you is from the react native tutorial repository so it's this one what I have here in my github account so I will put this to the uh, to the chat in case there is someone who is not aware with familiar with this link so this link is also in our Moodle, Moodle page. So it should be, should be probably be familiar with it, but the code is from this that repository indeed. So, uh, okay. So <coughs> here in this app.js, we have these multiple sections which are commented out. Uh, previously, we have been dealing with these, uh, these images and then the layout. And then uh, icons we have already talked about that in the breakout rooms. So let's see about then the, uh, the navigation. Or actually, I don't know if I have mentioned for everybody about this, this uh, these images. So let's see these images before we start, just so that everybody is on on, on track with those. So I'm gonna now. Uh, Activate the code for this step six for these images. We will check out this image and icon thing before we go to the navigation. So here, how this image thing works in uh, React Native is that uh, you can have two kinds of images basically. Uh, those images which uh, you load, you load uh, bundled to your uh, application source code. So here uh, I have two images being imported. So 
this is the way how you can deal with images when um, when you have some some images which are static for your application so that they are always bundled together uh, with your application source code so that they don't change all the time if you have some dynamic images then this is not the way how you deal with them then you need to do them with the urls or, or as files in the file system which you can load in your code but if you have static images this is the way how you can do it so import uh, an image give it some name here i'm a skier and mountains and then the, the skier and mountains here uh, i've created a, a component called image demo so i am passing this here a mountain image now safe prop via this image thing image prop and the the final result it looks like this this is now on my phone screen so here is then the image with the skier and here is the one with the mountain and if we take a look on how they have been implemented seeing this image demo this here in the step six images folder and here so now to display this kind of image in react native there is this image component coming from the react native so so then this image is used here and then for this source now you can deliver different kinds of uh, image image uh, data in different coming from different sources so now here, this is the, the, the image property coming from the props. So here in my app, JS, here is the image prop for this image demo component. So I'm giving here the imported skier and imported mountain image, to this image prop. And then I'm using it from the props image and putting it directly to the source per prop of the image component. And then I can style it here. Style the image there with, uh, with the CSS like like properties. And then the result here is that we have this kind of background. And then here is a normal text. This hello is a normal text coming from this view. And here is the text. Okay, but this is not the only way how you can deal with images. So let's see the actual React um, native image documentation. So there are also other ways which are uh, explained here. So here is what the general description. So this component can different di display uh, different types of images, network images. This would mean that you have a URL you can give a url for the image static resources this is something that i was just showing so when you import an image in your javascript code like i showed you that's now a static resource and then temporary local images and images from local disk meaning that you would then open the file uh, with some mechanism and then we, we uh, deal with those so Let's see where is the source. So now here uh, you can give either a remote URL or a local file uh, resource. And there should have been some examples. Uh, Here is now an example on, okay, okay, ah, okay, they're here scrolling. All right, let's zoom this up a little bit. Yeah, so here, this first part shows a similar kind of uh, static image asset what I was showing. Here, instead, they are using require, whereas I was using import. So in this case, there is no, no, uh, no difference in that. Then here, this image, as you can see, it's been it is being loaded from, uh, from a network resource, uh, and as you can see, what you are giving to the source prop is now an object with property called URI, and then here you have this URL of the image, URI of the image. 
So if you have some images which are then uh, hosted on some uh, web server somehow, and you want to show them in your React Native application, this, this is the way how you can do it. So for example, if you think about our graded exercise, where uh, you were supposed to uh, be able to create these posts of what, what, you are, what you want to sell, and then there was the requirement that there should be images. So now when you create the post, um, then those uh, images are sent to the server. And if you are using the Heroku and Cloudinary system, then the Cloudinary will give you this URI very easily once you complete the upload to Cloudinary. So then that URI could directly be used in your React Native application to show the image for the post. Then there is the possibility of uh, having the uh, the image here as a string. So this is also supported in uh, React Native. So as you can see here, the image information is actually uh, it is base64 encoded. So it works so that you have this kind of string here in the beginning, which gives the instructions that now this is a, an image string and it's in the base64 encoding. And this is the format, so it's a PNG image. And then this part. Okay, what happened? Okay, I dragged somehow that one. Okay, so this part here is the actual image information. So the image data is now represented by this string and it's this cross here. These React icons are these. these. So this is also possible. Um, and many times it can be, for example, that if you load an image uh, example from, from the file system it might be so that it is, it is there available in, in some kind of binary data which you can then convert to this uh, base64 string and send or use it for example in this this form so this is about the image so static images uh, are fairly simple use uh, and then as well as the network images so if i would have a network image let's give it a shot uh, i put some here let's take google and then go to try my luck and then okay serbia national day i get some image here let's take serbia flag Proper image. So. Okay, here is a JPG. Yeah. All right, let's try to load this one. So here, instead of having this one, it would be an object with prop URI and then the link there. And while we were looking at the image documentation, my my uh, USB connection has again stopped. The timeout is really short. I found a way to increase it. Yeah. Again. Okay, now it's loading. Yeah, okay, there is the Google Serbia National Day uh, image. So loading these images from the network resource, as you can see, it's it is pretty pretty uh, easy thing to do. Just put the object with URI property and then this image address there. Okay. 
then well, their images are back with the static asset. Okay, then uh, the second thing before we go to the uh, navigation thing uh, is these uh, icons. So easily you can have the situation that you would need some icons. And this shows now you an example of four different icons here in this kind of very big, big bar. It's this icon mix, mix component, which is available uh, in here in this step seven icons folder. So there is an icon package uh, coming with, with Expo and that has let's say pretty good selection. So for our purposes, uh, our purposes you can you can use that one. And here there is this kind of ionicons component being imported from this uh, Expo vector icons module. And then here the ionicons component is being used. So this one differ, defines now the image uh, uh, with the icon itself, and this one defines now some basic styling property like size and then color. So if I change, for example, here size 10, the icon is much smaller. Like so. And here is a link. I hope this is still valid. Yeah, so here is uh, the information on all the bundled icon sets in that package. So in, in this Expo vector icons package. So I have now imported the Ionicons. Uh, the Ionicons is just one of these. So there, in that package, there is 1,227 icons. And all of these packages are available in that in that package. Um, you can in, install this icon set like so. So there is a quite a big set of I icons available. And then, for example, now about these ionicons, if you can see the, the selection. So here are these these uh, icons. So now, for example. Let's change some of these icons. Here is this nice four icon. What is this one? Four outline. So I can go here. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, here is the new icon. I need to have this uh, profile, so person outline. where it's changed. Some, okay, there are logos as well. Here, nice database or server image. Let's take that one here. Server outline. There is that one. <clears throat> it seems I have some old older icon names. Um, the one was previously unknown. And then for example, here, this walk outline. Let's take this one. Okay, and there we go. In fact, I can change this color. I have it in green. Red. I think this also accepts all these. Uh, these as well, so we can uh, use hex colors. Yeah, so it works. Works like that as well. So icons are pretty pretty easy to use. Um, of course, in mobile applications, you usually need quite a lot of different icons for different uh, buttons to indicate that what, what is going to happen from here and, and help with the navigation. So this is on the ionicons, and then you can have all these different 
for example, the font awesome, which you are probably also familiar. So here, are, here is the gallery for the font awesome icons and, and so on. <clears throat> All right. Any question about these icon icons? Nope, I guess. Okay, uh, then I have probably shown this to everybody, at least in last week classes, but here is this Spotify demo component which showed uh, like a more complex UI um, built, built on, on different components. So, so this is something what you can maybe, maybe use uh, as a reference, as a reference in your own own work sometime. So this Spotify demo is uh, it's not here in the tutorials, but it's here in the components. Here is the Spotify, Spotify demo. So all these components here, they are used by the Spotify demo. So this is kind of the root component for, for this view. So here is the rendering part. This couple of components being rendered, playlist thing renders basically this, this whole view. And then we have here the scroll view and header gradient, which are gradient is the background, color gradient. Scroll view gives me this capability. So scroll here. And then uh, here is the footer controls, which is this one, this menu bar here. So as you can see, it, it does not belong to the scroll view at all. So this footer controls and the scroll view, they are they, they have no no parent child relationship. Playlist is here, it is inside. Scroll view and scroll view is not in any way related through the parent child relationship with this footer controls. So the footer controls is separated from the scroll view. Then here we have this uh, a list of these songs. So these these songs are coming from this kind of data, data array. So now if, if this would be a real application, this would be loaded, this information from some server API. Here that it's only. And known to this play playlist songs uh, reference. But as you can see, it's keeping given here as a prop to this playlist component. So the playlist component then that's component is rendering all this. So here we have uh, we have an image which is then this this big image here. Here is the name. Here we have a button. This one with it name secondary button that's a custom component here. And here is the name list of text again for these texts. And for these two dots, which would indicate some kind of a page, it swipes so that you can swipe side by side, maybe. They are here with this end to i concept. You can see it's coming from the same expo vector, expo vector icons package, which we were just talking about. Then here is a primary button. So this one. Uh, so this is again a custom component from here. And then here is a download toggle for this one. And there is also a custom component from here. And then there is the playlist songs, which is then taking care of showing all these four. So that's a custom component and from here. And as you can see, the songs is being given there as, as a prop. So we can check out, for example, the buttons, these uh, secondary and primary buttons. How do they work like? So let's begin from the primary button. It's this one. So here is one of the possible ways in how you deal with React Native with buttons. So a touchable highlight. So this touchable means that there is this some kind of uh, event handler available for, for the click event. And then the highlight uh, means that uh, it, it will react in a visual way when clicked. So you can see this goes a little bit darker when clicked. 
here is now this on press it's just printing out to the console something is being pressed and the console oh no, i think you can have it here so if i click on the debug button now react native runs a web worker inside this tab so now i can open developer tools here here is the console and i click uh, it doesn't show it okay now now it was working it was somehow late so now when i click there it seems that there is a lag here but it, it's showing these console outputs I think this is because of my USB connection. It was working way faster when I had the wireless Wi-Fi connection. But in any case, here I have the I have the JavaScript uh, output. Um, okay, you cannot use this one. This elements cannot be used here, as you can see. It's only for this one. This console is here, and then this sources also have debug debugger points there. Let's see. Okay, so they are here. So set that make point to my primary button. So I'll put it work. Now put something really low here. This is actually something that I have never done. tried to do, modify the code here in the editor. It's possible. No, no I will it here. Here. Button. Does it stop the execution? Not big one. On press, hopefully so. E. Then shake the device so it is not. It's loading the new modified version. I just modified. So here is that one. And Debug remote JS here. Let's see what happens. Cool. Now when I click on the I click here. Yeah, so now it stops there and the debugger state. So as you can see, you can also debug with this one. So now I can check out what are the, what are the props, for example, here, and um, what is the call stack and, and, and everything. So this was enabled when you when you shake your device. Ah, you know it's in break. So when you shake your device, okay, now it works. So here is then the option, option menu, what you can get. Okay, now, so then debug remote JS gives you then this menu this view and then you can open up it is here open the developer tools uh, so. and here it says that you can also have the uh, react developer tools to see more details on the, on the react itself if you need and probably at some point you, you would need to see some debugging information when you develop some real application
Okay, but in any case, uh, the point was so that buttons here is a touchable highlight. So if we check this out, yeah, native touchable highlight. It is suggesting there also a touchable opacity. Here, this is another kind of button, touchable opacity. And this one uh, has a small, small difference. This one also shows this kind of. There is information that what's the what's the difference? This is a small difference on how they behave on the click. I usually use this touchable highlight. Then there is a, a very basic component called button, which looks like this. But the downside for this normal button component is that there is a minimal minimal level uh, of customization. And here in the documentation, they say that. You should use the touchable opacity or the touchable highlight or touchable without feedback. So this one is uh, this one is uh, this touchable without feedback is a button which it doesn't indicate in any way when you click. It can react to clicks. It doesn't react so it in a visual way. So I don't recommend recommend using this one unless you have a special case. Instead. One of these these is better. And this touchable highlight, as you can see, you can style it with quite a lot. Here I have styles and then a container. So this styling is, is applied for the button itself. And then the text inside the button. So now I'm talking about this button here. There is a view, and then there is this text. So you style this text that has to have an own own styling. So you cannot, if you give text styling, for example, font size or font color here for this one, it doesn't work, and it can be a little strange because in in web CSS, if you have a div, and then inside the div you would have a text, and then you style the div to be a button from the visual presentation, and you can also style text here. It doesn't work so that you cannot give text stylings for this structural highlight and this container class. It will not work. You will need to have a text in its own component, like always in React Native, and then give the, uh, the styling that text. But then here is the, all the styling rules which are used to make the button look like this. And the default behavior of this uh, touchable highlight is so that it will darken this a little bit. You can customize it as well, it is possible. But uh, then what you need to do is that you will need to uh, you will need to uh, keep track of the button state in a state uh, variable. So then you would need to even either to have a class component or a hook so that you can keep track of this. And then change the state based on these own presses. And then you could have here um, basically a single line if statement, and then changing the style based on the button state. You want to customize what how it looks like when, when you are pressing. So this is the default behavior. It's, it, it darkens a little bit from my foot. Okay. But that's the, uh, the Spotify demo sample. Now let's get to the, the actual navigation part. So here is this step eight navigation stack. And here is step eight navigation tab. So this navigation thing, what we are using, called React navigation, uh, it comes with different kinds of navigation logics built in. So a stack navigation works like this, what we have now here. We have here a single view. Then when I click here on this button, it goes for a second view, and then when it goes to a third view. So now the view one, view two, uh, and this view three, they are thought to be like on stack, stacked on top of each other. And the stack navigation automatically gives you the capability of going back. So because now they are 
uh, like laid on top of each other. So here we have our, our stack. Uh, so this is the V1, V2, and then V3. So when I click, uh, when I click here on the back button, this V3 is being erased from the stack, V3. And when I click here on the back here, now this V2 was erased. So we are back on V1. So that's how the stack navigation works. Then when I click here and go to V2, V3, so now the new views are added here on, on top of this V1. So they are stacked on top of each other. So that's what the stack navigator means. And then I can go back to the view three, to view two, and then from view two to view three, view one. So that's the basic of, of stack navigation. Then of course, we can also go <laughs> navigate in a more complex way than just going back or go to a new view. So I can click here to start. And now you can see, I don't have here a back button. Now go back to view three. So you can reset the stack navigation so that the whole stack is reset and the stacking is started um, again on top of from a fresh state. So let's see how this stack navigation works. We have a component called stack navigation demo. And it's here and here. So here how this navigation application looks like this we're looking at. So as you can see, we have a couple of React components here, something known as navigation container, stack navigator, and then some stack screens. So how this works is that when you are using uh, this React navigation and the native version of it, it always begins from navigation container. So uh, this navigation container is something what should wrap the whole application in which you want to use the navigation in any way. So typically this navigation container is in your root component. Then you can have multiple navigators. Here we have now this single navigator. We have this stack navigator. And you can have a tab navigator and then uh, you have a tab navigator, you can have a stack navigator, and so on. So you can have these navigators inside each other. And then you could have views which have navigate navigation inside them, inside those views. And these views in this React Native navigation, uh, they are called screens. So to, to, to declare a screen which you can navigate, you must use this stack.screen. We are using Stack Navigator. So a screen must be declared and a name must be given. So this is the name that you can then use when you have, for example, some button, like I have here these buttons, but I'm clicking here, go to view three. I am saying now to go to view three and using this name. This is not view three. This could be whatever this name. This name. It doesn't have to be view one, view two, view three. These names can be anything, but those are the names which you can then, which you would then need to use when you want to change, change the uh, the view or the screen, however you want to call. It. And then the actual component what is connected to these names is then declared like so. So view one is now a React Native component which has been declared here, like view two and view three. So with these components, you give that, okay, for this screen, it shall be known as view one. And then this component shall be drawn when view one is this uh, screen. And <clears throat> let's see how the, how the view one, for example, looks like. 
it is one of the here, and here is the view one, and here for the view four. Which is not included in the package, but okay, this is how the view one looks like. So as you can see, this view one component, it does not have basically any knowledge, or it does not have to have any knowledge. It can have, but it does not have to have any knowledge that it is now being used inside uh, inside this kind of a React navigation screen. So. Here I can create my, my view however I want it. And then just in uh, then use that, that component in uh, in a React navigation screen and with some name if I want to do so. And the same goes for the view two and view three. So these are just uh, basic React navigation or React components, and they are not using any, any special, special things to, so that they can be shown. Let's see how it looks like if we modify this a little bit. So if I go to view one, Wait a second, I need to reload this, this application. It work again. And maybe it says. Oh, it's not somehow. Okay, so here we have the view one. I could have here uh, whatever components and, and they will work as normal. And this has no knowledge that it is now inside a React Net navigation. It can get the information, but it doesn't have to have any, any kind of special things to work. Then when I want to do so that when I click here on the on the uh, go to view two button. So that's this one here. So as you can see, on the props, this component, it now has this kind of navigation inside. That is now given automatically. And I have it like so that we have view one component in this screen. So I have not declared that this view one should have a prop called navigation, but because it's in a, in this access screen, in this navigation, it will have this navigation available. So I can get the information on the, the current navigation state with these props. But then I have here a method, for example, called navigate. Now I say that navigate to view two. So this is now a name declared here. When I say that go to view two, React Navigation will try to find a matching name from here. So those names would be unique. And then view two will be displayed, which is this one. Then here in the view two, there is a similar, similar uh, 
navigate method call to go to view three. I click there. We are now here on, uh, on view three. And here this view three has a couple of different buttons. It has uh, this back button, which is now here, this one, which has the same functionality as this. This is now automatically generated this header with this back. So there is the possibility to go back in the navigation history, like so. And then this to start will take me to view one and it will reset the navigation. And then I can give uh, an index that, that, uh, that we, from which, which element in the navigation stack I want to do the reset. And then what shall be placed there into the stack. So basically that I want to have, I want to have a fresh start from view one. That's the reason when I click here to start, here there will not be an automatically generated back. There. Okay, next uh, there would be a small exercise that you should uh, you should either take your own uh, this credit exercise work if you have started it and then try to activate this stack navigation there or you could uh, create a new fresh project and do a similar stack navigation as seen here. So in either case, the point would be so that you initialize the navigation, you create navigation container, you create a stack navigator, and then you would have a couple of screens from which to navigate from each other to and from. So that's the point. So now you can use either your own, your own code from your graded exercise if it's in a such a state that it can be used. If not, then create a new React native project with Expo. The command was Expo init. And, uh, and then for that new project, import React navigation project, and then create a navigation container, stack navigator, and then get a couple of screens and then the code necessary to move so that would be the exercise now for you. Do you want this in written or was it understandable as, as it is? What do you think? I, I think it's clear. Written, please. Okay. I will write it here to notepad. So your task is to practice where navigation. So use either your created exercise project if you have are it existing already or create a new React navigation, create a new React native set. Then uh, install and take and use the React navigation package create at least two views and functionality to move between those. Okay, so that's the idea in written. 
So here is the example code. Now your task is to adapt that into your, your own project if you have it already or create a new React Native project. Then install the React uh, navigation package and then create at least two views in the functionality to move between those. That's the task here. And this React navigation, what we are talking about, I can put the links there. This one here. Oops. Here. And how to create a new project with Expo. Here. The link. And then my example code, if you want to see, it's here. Resources. Okay. That's now the task. And what we'll do is that let's have a 15 minute break and then combine combined with a half an hour time to work on this, uh, this exercise. So all in all, we will continue at 10.45, and then we'll see about the, the stack navigation. And we sorry, the tab navigation. So I will, by using stack. So here the idea is to practice this stack navigator. So after this exercise, we'll see about this, uh, this tab navigator thing as well. So, Start now, then break 15 min and exercise time 30 min. As we can combine those two, continue at 10.45. So, so this is the instruction, this exercise. I will now put my screen to pause and have a 15 minute break myself and then I'll be back here. And then if you have any questions, I can help you. You are brave enough to show, ask and, and show your code here without smaller breakout rules. Hopefully so. Okay, I will now pause the screen and pause the recording until 10.45, so that's when the recording will continue. Okay, so here we have the tab navigation uh, example. So as you can see, if we compare the stack navigation and tab navigation from with each other, so both of them are using the same navigation container here. You can see it's the same. Then the difference part is the uh, here that in with the stack navigator we are importing this uh, stack in the React navigation, whereas here uh, there are different kinds of tabs, various of bottom tabs being imported. So on the bottom of the screen we have this tab, and then we will have this create a bottom tab navigator what we can use from there. And here we have now this tab component when when we call this create. Navigator. This is one what we can render on the parts of that. So here, tab navigator. So it's the same logic as what we had here, stack navigator previously. And then we had these screens on the stack. Now with this tab thing, we have this tab navigator and then we have these tab screens. And in the same way what we have here, name, and then we have component, but we can give there. Yeah, this draw this main view with this name. Um, and here it's on the, on the visible. And then we have the second second view, secondary view, which is this one. And the this tab control it displays like this automatically here. And then it allows me to change the view like so. And these icons here, they are done, dealt with these options. So tab bar icon, and then here, as you can see, this is now a function which will return the presentation for this one. So 
these color and size, these are now uh, properties taken from an object that is given here as a parameter. So I can get that I want this uh, tab is giving me the color and the size that I can then pass to my, my icon. So the color should be now blue, and then here it should be gray. And then when I click here, now the tab navigator will give it to change the color value and again then give it okay now it should be blue this should be gray so that's the way how this will, will change now if i change here that i will put color let's say here it's red now it's red all the time and we can see that uh, the icon will not not change only the text here main will change and i believe there is also a setting which can you can disable this uh, this name of the screen to be shown. So this name is this one. So we can see that the name of the screen is now displayed here in the, in the tab. But you can customize it however you want. Change it back to this, this color. So tab is controlling the color system inside. And then uh, these views themselves, this main view and secondary view, well, these are just uh, <coughs> normal React Native views without any any special thing. There is no navigation or anything. Now, uh, what, what would be possible would, could be so that uh, we could have a tab navigation combined with stack navigation. So that, for example, uh, there could be uh, a stack navigator inside this this demo view or this secondary view, and then the, uh, the stack navigator would be needed to dealt with here. So we can try this and see how it works. So if I have here the tab navigation. I will add a third tab. Copy that, paste here. Then the name here, and then. So now it will say that I don't have this system here. Let's create this stack in tab view. So Now I have here the stack view, it's, it's empty. But now I can create here, for example, a stack navigator if I would like. There are certain situations where you would like to have some internal navigation in a tab. So you can do it also with the stack navigator or with another navigation. So now let's see what I need to have for the stack navigator. Here we have it. I need to import this one. So I have it here. All these. And paste them here. Like so now I have the stack navigator thing here. And then I don't need to have a navigation container because I already have one here in this tab navigator. Here I have a navigation container. This is one time only, as it says, this should be rendered at the root. The whole app. So now we can use here a stack navigator. So now, oops, okay, I think it's okay. So module, let's say, components new one. Oh, yeah, I'm already in the components. So now, here I have tab navigation, and here I have stack navigation inside tab navigation. And as you can see, the tab navigation will keep the stack navigation alive. Here I'm now at view three, and when I go to these tabs, this one will be remembered. 
I can go back. I'm not out of at view two. I'm going to switch tabs and go back. I'm still in view two. Like so. So this is an example on how you can combine these uh, these navigators. And of course, it would work also vice versa. So you could have a stack navigator, and then uh, you could have uh, inside one of the screens in the stack navigator, you could have a tab navigator. Just as well as you would like. And if you checked out this, this pop and tabs Slack navigation. This is what. So here there are a couple of different these uh, these tab navigations. So create material bottom tab navigator and create material top navigator. So you could with this one you could have this top set of tabs also being uh, like you see here. And this view actually shows you now an example of a stack navigator and and. Uh, Tab navigator combined because here you see these examples, which is clearly then now a indicator that there is also a, a stack navigator at work. And then this part here is then controlled with a tab navigator with the tabs being available here. So it's one, one of the examples. And uh, for all these things in this React uh, navigation, there is lots and lots of customization options, like like you can see here, for example. So it is possible to customize also these text. So by default, in the stack navigator, there is the back. Of course, it's possible to customize it, like so. It shows the name of the view, for example. In fact, you can say examples or whatever it is you want. You name it. So and then here you can see lots and lots of different guides, what you can do, hiding tab bar in specific screens. So it's possible to hide these and, uh, and, and lots and lots of different kind of configuration options are available. Different scenarios. We will not go through, through these, but just see these most basic situations. So that then if you are, are having this some kind of special re uh, requirement or need, then you can find information on how to how to configure exactly that situation. All in all, these are pretty pretty straightforward to use. You just have to remember that um, there could only be a single navigation container in your whole application. If you have multiple navigation containers, then if it does not give an error, then some very strange. <laughs> behavior uh, is probably going to be seen. It uses, it uses the navigation logic. Okay, so so far our components have been given like this, uh, but then what would how would you do it so that if you need to pass some data via props to these these components, you cannot write write here, for example, that main view from prop then you like this, this will not work. So when you need to pass uh, pass some props, then there is a, a different kind of approach and that's illustrated here at this step 9a. So let's see how that one looks like. The app here first. Say it with this step A. So this step 9A folder is a strange name. There is no step 9B whatsoever. There is only single step 9. In any case, uh, so this one shows how you can have navigation and then 
data, if you pass data with the prop, because there are also other mechanisms how you can pass data if you're dealing with some, uh, let's say, uh, Redux or some other kind of state management system, or even the, the context, I guess, can be used to react pass data to another use. But if you want to use the, the traditional way of passing props, then it works very well. So here uh, we have a little bit more code, and this is now, uh, as you can see, it's a class component, so a similar kind of similar uh, or or this kind of old style, older style uh, state component. So here we have a constructor, we have the state variables here. This logic would not be any different regarding the navigation, if, even if you are using this. Even if you are using these uh, hooks to deal with states in, in a function, function based component. So here is how, how the rendering part looks like. So here we have a navigation container, we have tab navigator, then we have a couple of tabs here as, as you can see just the screens. So the different thing what is what was before was that we were using here we were giving the, co the component what to render previously here as prop component and, and then the component like this but now in this example as you can see there is no value for the component property instead we are giving this as the child of this screen so this one will be rendered as a child of this screen and now we can whatever we want at the, in the props. So these props will be the props what are given by React Native in the Re React Navigation by default. And then here we can then render whatever we want. We are using main view. And then we are, we are passing all the default props to this main view component. So basically what we are getting here is the navigation props. Uh, in any case, when we do it like this, we don't have to care what, what props are being given. We are simply passing them through. And then here, we can then declare our own props for this, this component. We have name, on name change, so a method to execute when there is this kind of event. And here, another method to execute when there is this event. And then the state parameter is given here. So how this looks like on the screen, uh, simple name right in navigation No, no, it's getting stuck all the time. And now it's working. Yes. Makes no sense why it works sometimes and sometimes doesn't. Okay, now. 
Mm, okay, let's do some of the old one. Yeah, I need to say this one. Now we have this uh, path data navigation view. So this is the first view we have then here. There is an error as well. So we have two other tabs as well. So this is just showing how to pass the props to these components. So this is with the child uh, prop rendering. Here we have this main view. And what this does is that I can write here, hello world. And then when I click, it will activate this, this on say main. And then it will display it here. So the information what I wrote is kept here in this uh, tab data navigation. So this is not a sort of root component. So what I wrote is kept here in the state of this name. So hello world is now written there. And then this is named is a Boolean variable which just controls that is there some name or not. And then I have here a couple of these methods on name change. So whenever I write something to the input field, this one will get called and a new name will be place to this name variable in the state. And then when I click on the save button, uh, then this is name saved will be changed in the state. And these state variables are passed to this main view component via these props. And now we can use those props here in this main view. Here, this is the main view. So here uh, we are doing some conditional rendering. So if the is name saved prop is true, then we only display this kind of result, which is now visible here on the screen. So you can see we are receiving the name via the props. So that was the hello world, hello, hello world. And then if the is name saved is not, through, then we display this part, which then has the text input. And when the text input changes, we are calling this on name change, which is already auto declared as a prop. And then we have this button, which is also declared as a prop. So then here we are returning uh, this output, which is now output is the one which is being controlled here. So this one said it illustrates on how we can deal with the props in this React navigation. And the answer is indeed that we need to do it at least if you're rendering, rendering the, uh, your views as child children of this and these tab screens. And the same would be for the stack also. For these screens, you need to render children and then you can deal with or give some props to your components. If you don't need to give any prop, then you can go here, say component, and then give a character the component there. Then you don't have the capability of passing any prop. And then here we have another example in this. These two uh, tabs where there is a very, very uh, cumbersome calculator with extremely bad user experience. Here I can give calculator input, for example, five plus three. And then I need to go to the output tab to see the output. It's like five plus three is eight. This is just, again, another example on how you can uh, pass data with the props. And now we have the component, this tab data navigation is keeping the state, this calculator variable. And then that state is being shared by these components in these different tab screens. So this second one, this calculator input is here. And it's using this calculator input component. We have a couple of props. We have on value change, which is now a method which has been declared here. So set calculator variable or value here, and then we are updating the state like so. Yeah, we get the state the name of the 
sorry, see, so, so the value of the calculator variable, <coughs> variable, and then whatever are the variables in the state, I think those as value A and B. So this is the A and this is the B. Am I modify here something? So six now, on value change was called and then value A was updated to be value five, six. And it's been given here to this state compared to here. And then here on the calculator output tab here, we have this component, which also receives value A and value B. They are being assigned from the state. And then calculator output, this is simply operation that is being done. So we print out result and then the value of the value A is now five, six. And we print out plus, and then we print out value B, which is three. And then we print out the result of those summed together, value A plus value B, uh, 59. And, and that's it. And these values are now given here through the props, and they are stored in the state of this tab data navigation. So, as I said, here is the way how you can pass props to these navigation screen components. Okay, so what do you think about this? Does it look complicated or let's see? Um, straightforward. Is, is something confusing you or do you have any questions or anything? This is nope. a sit situation which you would encounter quite a lot probably if you are providing classical React application kind of application, you have the state state in the root component or most of the state in the root component and then you will need to pass the data and the methods via props. And then you have navigation, so this is the way you do it. If you are using uh, some other solution to store the state, then doing with this like this child, rendering the children is not needed. And you can go on with the component property with the navigation, since those components can, can be hooked into the state by other means. But yeah, for most of the applications, I like to do it so that I have this uh, central state in a root component. And not, not bring, out, bring in any dedicated state management thing, because they always have some overhead to set up and wire together which might only pay off in a bigger application. Okay, so that was it for uh, for today, I had in my mind. We have still two more topics to cover. Uh, here we have step 10 and step 11, how to deal with uh, image picker, and then how to deal with the JSON web token authentication. This is something that we will uh, See on next lesson. So image picker and how to send HTTP requests. And then here with this JSON web token authentication, how to store the JSON web token into the mobile client, and then uh, how to how to deal in the application so that you are not showing the login screen all the time when the application starts if the user has already logged in. So it will be there. But for today, the main topic was indeed this navigation which we learned that you can do by using, for example, this React Navigation uh, library, which is not the only one, only way. There are other ways as well, but this is quite popular, and quite uh, versatile. And this React Navigation has these uh, different navigator logics. So we covered this tag navigator and then the tab navigator and how they work and some basic configuration options <clears throat> for both of them. And then how, how to pass data, uh, you need to pass props and how to do that. So that's basically uh, 
our lesson for today. So now uh, I don't give you, I, I'm not going to give you any like small uh, home exercise work. Instead, your continuing homework should be to focus on your graded exercise and, and trying to get that one implemented by using these things what we cover, uh, cover in the lessons. So, so far we have learned how to create a basic React, React native application, how to, how to do the layouts, how to style the components, and now we know how to uh, navigate between these uh, views. Uh, so we already have quite a lot of uh, some basic, basic knowledge, and that could be used to create uh, the most important parts of your application almost already. So I suggest that you would you would start working on, on your graded home exercise already if you have not yet started. And then we have uh, our tutoring sessions. Mm. Tutoring session, what is the day on this week? Let's see. So we have, um, yeah, it's on Thursday. We will have a lesson on Wednesday at 12 o'clock. And then on Thursday at, at uh, one o'clock, we will have the tutoring session. So if you have, have, are having any problems, then please come to the tutoring lessons. Then ask or alternatively, we can also discuss any problem during these lessons. I'm sure that if somebody has a problem and then we discuss about the problem here in the lessons, during the lessons, uh, it will also benefit other students as well. So there is no need to be like ashamed of if you don't understand anything or have some have some problem in your application, then you can very well spend some less some time to cover also those. But yeah, that's it for today. Now I think it's a good time to have a lunch. And then we'll wrap up this session today. Okay, have a nice day and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.